So welcome to part C of lecture 5, looking at the Gauss-Markov theorem and the assumptions of the classical linear regression model. So we've just done the preliminaries now. Um, you understand that we're asking the question, when is ordinary least squares, minimizing the sum of squared residuals, the best way to estimate slopes? Uh, we discussed that there are other ways, there are many other ways to uh, estimate a slope and ordinary least squares is just one of them and so we need to figure out when is OLS the best one and we know there are other methods. We talked briefly about what a linear estimator is. That's not the most important idea for a basic introduction to regression like we're doing in econometrics. But you do need to know what best means. So we discussed that and I showed you a in part B the picture of a dartboard and what a minimum variance estimator looks like and what an unbiased estimator looks like. So now that those preliminaries are out of the way, now we're finally ready to try to answer this question. Okay, so when is minimizing the sum of the squared residuals the best way to find a slope and y-intercept for a relationship. So the solution to this problem was proved by two people and we call it the Gauss-Markov theorem after the two people who first proved it. What's kind of curious is that Gauss, a German, proved it in 1821. Some people give some different dates for this, but uh, Markov almost, not quite a hundred years later, in 1912 is credited with discovering the same thing. Since they discovered it independently and since most people in the early 1900s thought that Markov was the first to have figured this out, that OLS is the best if certain things are true, originally it was called the Markov theorem or the Markov theorem. There are various ways to spell Markov here. Uh, people called it the Markov theorem for a long time and then some people started figuring out, wait, the famous mathematician Gauss figured this out earlier, so now we call it the Gauss-Markov theorem. And it gives us a list of six assumptions, and there's an optional seventh one, where if this first six assumptions are true, then ordinary least squares is what we call blue, which stands for it's the best linear unbiased estimator or, since we know what these terms mean, these words mean, the minimum variance, most accurate, you can think about it that way, linear, we won't go into that again, unbiased, on average correct, uh, not on average too high, not on average too low for the estimates of slopes, uh, best linear unbiased way to estimate slopes. And so best, again, means it uses the data you have in the most efficient way to get the most precise, most accurate estimate of what the slopes are. So if the first six of these things we're going to go through one by one are true, then OLS is the best linear estimator. If we add the seventh assumption, the seventh assumption is uh, one of the simplest of the, the assumptions that the residuals actually the, the, the theoretically the stochastic error term that the stochastic error term is normally distributed. The way we test it is by observing the residuals to see if those are normally distributed. We can make a histogram. There are some other methods we can do that we will use to check to see if they are or appear to be normally distributed. So if the seventh is true that means that out of any complicated fancy method that we could possibly invent. If all seven of these assumptions are true, then minimizing the sum of the squared residuals is the absolute best method. There's no better technique. Um, if only the first six assumptions are true, then let me move this down a little bit. If only the first six assumptions are true, then that means that there could be a better way a, with a smaller variance, a little bit more accurate way to estimate the slopes, but OLS is still probably pretty good at finding the slopes. So many times you'll see a paper, an econometrics paper or another 
uh, kind of regression paper where they don't even discuss whether the residual term is normally distributed or not. This is actually pretty common that people don't discuss it. I think people's opinion is usually, well, if the first six are true, that's good enough. And uh, a lot of people do have that opinion. But we're going to go through these assumptions um, in this lecture five, one by one, pretty quickly. And then the rest of the regression, uh, the rest of a typical regression class will, will take each of these assumptions in more detail and see, well, what do you do if assumption one is violated? How can you check and how can you fix it? What do you do if assumption two is violated? How do you check and what is the problem? And three, four, five, six. And some of these are more important than others. Some people, uh, some of these people kind of just overlook and and don't worry about as much. But they're all important, and we'll discuss these one by one. So let me go ahead and go through assumption one here uh, briefly, and then we'll we'll take some of the others. So assumption one says that the regression model is linear in the coefficients, is correctly specified and has an additive error term. And so even though it's one assumption, it's really got three different ideas put into this one main idea. And so, actually I've had second thoughts. I think rather than rushing through talking about this first assumption, since it does have three parts, I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, overall overview lecture right now and come back and discuss assumption number one and give it its due time that it should have.